Welcome back to Telltale Poetry Submission Interview Series. I'm so pleased to be interviewing someone I've been in touch with online since my early days of seeking publication, Jendi Ryder, co-founder of the amazing resource website, Winning Writers. Jendi Ryder is vice president of Winning Writers, editor of the best free literary contests and oversees the Winning Writers Literary Contest. Jindy is an award-winning author whose recent books include the short story collection, An Incomplete List of My Wishes, the novel Two Natures, and the poetry collections Bullies in Love and A Talent for Sadness. Jindy's work has appeared in Poetry, The New Criterion, Mudfishes, Mud, Mudfish, Passages North, Cutthroat, and many other publications. Welcome, Jendi, and thanks for taking some time to chat with me for the Telltale Poetry Series interview series. Thanks for having me. It's great to meet you, so to speak, after all these years of uh, benefiting from the resources on your website and publishing your publications news at Winning Writers. It's nice to deepen that relationship. Yes, absolutely. And we, I mean, we've just been communicating over email for what feels like half my life, but I guess really has, well, it's been probably five or six years at least. So it's it's absolutely just a pleasure to, to meet you in person, as it were, uh, for this interview. So thank you so much for taking the time uh, with me today. So sure, my pleasure. I, um, I have, you know, some great questions for you, I hope. So one thing I'm always really curious about is how a project starts. So I'd love to hear a little bit about the original inspiration for creating Winning Writers and how that all got started. Sure. Winning Writers is 20 years old this year. It's really hard to believe in, in internet years. That's like 100 years. Uh, but uh, I've always been a creative writer, and I started publishing poetry in magazines when I was in high school, entering contests. So that was a world I knew pretty well. My partner, Adam Cohen, my, my life partner and my business partner, uh, we had just gotten married a couple of years before and lived in New York City. We were both working at different uh, large publishing organizations. He was circulation director at the Atlantic Monthly Magazine. And at that time, I was working for the educational publisher, Facts on File News Service, where I got a fantastic education in proofreading. And um, we both like didn't really see ourselves as New York City, you know, big organization executives. So we put our minds together, like, what what is something we both know about? How can we pool our resources? And at the time, uh, having contest information on the web was kind of unusual. You still had to write away to a lot of places to get guidelines or look in a, a print magazine and then type the URL into your web browser. So we thought, okay, we're gonna have a database of contests that people can just click on search directly. And that will be like the part that people pay for. And then the fun part for us will be, you know, running our own contests or curating resources or highlighting links to things on the web we think people should read, kind of like poets and writers where people buy the magazine for the ads because they want to enter contests. And then the fun part is, is the editorial part. And so that was our initial vision. Uh, we started out with a database of contests and then we started running our own contests at the same time. And the um, thing is, people were not really paying for the, uh, the full database commensurate with the amount of work it took to eventually maintain a database of complete contest guidelines for over a thousand contests. I don't think enough people realized that we were doing a lot of legwork for them and it was worth paying for. So uh, maybe five, six years ago, um, maybe longer, I don't even remember now, a, a while ago, we switched to just doing free literary contests because that's a, a subset of maybe 300 to 500 contests as opposed to like 3000 contests. Um, and we would just have that information in the database for free if you subscribe to our newsletter. And we brought on other products that people pay for, like more of our own contests. Uh, Adam is the marketing and uh, internet genius of our operation. He's, he's the business and technical side, and he's really good at finding as the web improves and as things change on the internet, like always going with those trends to find what's gonna make money for us. How are people making money now off the internet? So like right now we sell sponsored tweets, we do solo mailings. Uh, so the business has evolved in that way, but, but always the heart of it has been helping people target the contests that are honest, uh, that are a good value for money and that are appropriate for their type of work. 
Yeah, no, that's excellent. And it's great to hear that you've just continued to evolve over time. I mean, what you said makes perfect sense because now all of those contests that, you know, are, they're fee-based. So it makes sense for them to have their own marketing efforts. They're all over the internet now. And the free ones are the ones that have a hard time finding their voice, you know, getting pushed out. Mm -hmm. I definitely feature a lot of those on my site as well and love your tweets. Um, <laughs> so happy to support by uh, retweeting as I come across those. Certainly there, there's a great uh, writer community, you know, on Twitter that that is watching for those. So it sounds like the perfect business plan. It'll be really cool to see how it continues to evolve. Mm -hmm. um, now that I sort of know more about it, I'll, I'll be watching a little more closely to see what cool things you guys come up with next okay. for sure. So yeah, we're, we're branching out right now. One, one of our freelancers, we, we have a, a bunch of freelancers who do different parts of the business remotely, as well as the two of us, like maintaining the whole operation. And one of our freelancers who used to live next door to us and now lives in Poland is mm -hmm. Anne Midla, just invaluable. Um, and she's just recently branched out onto Reddit for us oh. and has a literary contest forum that pulls in um, you know, some of the same information that we have on our other social media to reach a different demographic. Uh, I think she's on Instagram now putting up our book covers for the self-published book contest winners. Um, we're reaching out to to TikTok, to the to the book talk teenage girls who are really popular with their, their cute little book videos and and uh, promote some really good literature in a very fun, bite sized way. So uh, it's good to have people of different ages working for us who can reach out to different media niches that way. So look for us on Reddit. Our yeah, no, that, and that's a universe I have not spent a lot of time in, although yeah. some occasionally. And I have, okay, I've been shown some TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, um, can lose, you can watch a lot of TikToks on Twitter sure. and really waste your time. And your day yeah, yeah and no, absolutely, absolutely. But that's that's all really fascinating stuff. That's super cool. I appreciate you sharing that. I definitely would like to spend a little bit more time in those spaces too. And that's inspiring to kind of get me to do that. I did take on Instagram not that long ago, although it, it took mm -hmm. me a little while to get, you know, figure out how to navigate that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I think it's great that we do well because a lot of the support is for emerging writers for those who are new to this game right who don't really know much about the writing biz or the poetry biz or how to really get their work out there. They know they love to write, you know, and they have some inclination to maybe share that work, but they don't really know where to get started and I mean that's how I originally found winning writers too is just you know, late in late in the game, graduating from college and going, hey, I'm I want to do this for real. Um, and not really, you know, it wasn't it's not something they encourage it, I would say, in university, but they don't really tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my instructor brought in a big stack of like literary magazines and mm -hmm. was like, yeah, you should send your stuff out. <laughs> yeah. um, and that was about it's as much lose coaching. a lot of money that way. You can you can really lose a lot of money with those kind of scattershot submissions and and we we see ourselves as serving writers in all levels of experience and especially in the free contest space there's a lot of scams you know it used to be those those anthologies you know that you you would say oh you're a semi-finalist please give us fifty dollars for a copy of the anthology and i think right. we helped raise um, awareness about what a ripoff that was um, now i think there's other contests that that have just really um, abusive rules in the fine print about how they claim the rights to all of your content, whether you win or not. So they're just kind of content mining from unsuspecting applicants. And so we, we always try to, to look out for the newbie as well as have resources that people more advanced will benefit from. And I think that makes us different from some of the other literary uh, contest directory type sites and magazines that are a little more niche for particular um, particular types of writers you know like the writer maybe more for commercial fiction poets and writers more for the mfa crowd like we try to serve everybody yeah no that's awesome it's definitely just i mean there's just a vast amounts of information on your site for sure <laughs> of those resources and you've you've touched on this maybe but what would you say you're most proud of I think it's hard it's hard to just pick one you know but one of the things that we're most proud of is our really large archive of winning uh, poems, stories, essays, book excerpts from our own contests. 
we started out in 2002, right after 9-11 with the war poetry contest, because we wanted to reflect in a, a more nuanced way about the kinds of political issues that had come to the forefront. Uh, things that were very simplistic in the national discourse at that time, pro or anti-war. And so we have about 10 years of, of really moving poems, uh, a lot of them from veterans or people whose families have been touched by war, who might not consider them most part of the same literary community, but have very compelling things to say. Uh, so I'm really proud of those archives. And now we have the, the four contests that we currently have are the humor poetry contest, which has been running for 20 years. And, you know, if you like high quality, tasteless writing, that is the place to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. I, we, I, we will publish anything that, you know, doesn't punch down at marginalized people, but it can be, you know, blasphemous, obscene, disgusting, you know, as long as it's well written, we will, we will be interested. So I think we make a home for that kind of edgy stuff. Uh, but try to be sensitive also to the impact of it. So I'm, I'm proud of how we walk that line. And so we have the fiction and essay contest and the poetry contest archives on there as well. Those are just sort of general interest topics and some, some really great stuff there. And the North Street Book Prize, which is like, I guess our flagship contest right now for self-published books of poetry, fiction, memoir, uh, graphic novels, art books, and children's picture books. I think Which that's is all. so important. We keep adding stuff. Yeah. And that is, Self that is pretty much what I do all through November through January is read those books. And oh, awesome. so I'm proud of the work we put into discriminating, uh, you know, through, you know, 2000 books, me and Ellen LaFleche, our, our fearless co-judge uh, and our screeners, of course, work very hard at that. And I think we have given a platform to a lot of people who feel shut out of the regular publishing world and whose work is just as good, if not better. So check out our contest archives if you want to get a flavor for our values and our tastes and opportunities. No, oh, that's so great. The self-published contest world is like so microscopic. It's it's so fantastic that you guys, I, I mean, you've, you've obviously done a, a great job of finding those gaps right of the things that are missing from the writing community and ways to support writers outside of you know the plethora of you know there's a whole lot of certain types of contests and opportunities yeah. but there's there's these segments that are just have been missing that you're filling and i've, I've recently done a lot of research on self-publishing opportunities mm -hmm. and it's still sparse. I hope people watching this will look for opportunities to add to that because there's some really, really great writing out there and some authors and poets who have really created businesses and communities around self-publishing mm -hmm. that nurture, you know, a broader group than maybe mm -hmm. you get, you know, from a traditional published book. So I'm really encouraged about everything that I'm seeing happening in the self-published publishing world. Um, especially mm -hmm. with poetry, just because that's my thing. But uh, speaking of that, um, what would you like to see more of in the literary community? Are you seeing other gaps that maybe you're targeting in on or that, that maybe don't make sense for you to add mm -hmm. to your platform that you hope other people would take on? That's a really good segue because I feel like the, the second class treatment of self-published and indie books is something that really irks me as a small press writer. Uh, all my books have been through contests or other small literary presses and the publishers have done a great job and their, you know, their lists are a lot of writers that I am happy to be in the company of, but it's really hard financially for them to break into the big review outlets. They can't afford to give away lots of copies on NetGalley or Goodreads. They can't afford to advertise in shelf awareness. And even if they did, the economics of small press publishing are uh, often print on demand and there's unreasonable exclusions of print on demand books from a lot of these, uh, a lot of these more respected and larger I guess, larger outreach review outlets and publicity outlets. And I feel like I've been reading self-published books uh, very intensively for six years now. And I think the quality is uh, definitely the same, you know, as a lot of books that I have 
bought from mainstream publishers. The prejudice against them is not founded. Uh, and I wish that the literary community would stop gatekeeping in this really arbitrary way. Uh, another, another thing that I feel could be improved is the definition of emerging writers. It's often just an arbitrary age or number of books you've published. Uh, there's a, I just wanna look up, in my notes, I wrote down the name of the Twitter site. It's, it is at no entry underscore arts is a really great Twitter feed that looks at like, why are there age cutoffs for emerging writers mm -hmm. for contests? And they'll sign petitions and they'll try to get those rules changed. And I think that's a really important issue to, to bring awareness to. So those are some things I'd like to see changed in, in the writing world is like, let's move beyond these really mechanical ways of determining who's worthy and who gets access. Uh, and you're gonna get a more diverse, more interesting literary community that way. Absolutely. Uh, so as far as other niches we might wanna move into, there's so many. Like Adam is always the one who's finding these, these ideas. He's the marketing man. And, and he'll say to me, Dendi, why don't we do this or that? And then I'll be like, I don't have the time to add another category. <laughs> it know, is, or, it is hard, you know. yeah. I think, um, I absorb information visually and through through reading so much better than through video and audio. Like I don't I'm, I don't really listen to podcasts. I don't have time. So we would like to offer at some point like video and audio type prizes the way like the Missouri Review has the Miller Audio Prize, for example. Uh, we'd have to figure out who's going to judge that because I think it would take me way too long to be able to absorb those and discriminate you know among them the way i can do very quickly with reading sure. so that's a that's an area where sort of we need staff and money to be able to do that uh, and beyond that i guess just as the internet and literary landscape changes we're always looking out for those those opportunities well and i think that speaks to i mean that's why you've that's why you've got your longevity right is because you're willing to pivot and move and like come to those places where you know you're needed most and do it in a very effective way and be consistent and just keep it going which is also so 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 important with everything in the writing community i mean there are some really great platforms and and journals and magazines and other things that mm -hmm. you know will get a really good momentum and then you know support falls away for one reason or another, the main person, you know, has to attend to other things in their life. And mm -hmm. sometimes those things don't transition to anyone else. And it's sad. So it's really sure. amazing to see, see winning writers really flourishing and just continuing to change with the environment. I just think it's awesome. Well, thank you. I, I think it helps that we've been around for a while. It, uh, it establishes credibility. And when people see that we, we give good customer service, with our contest, we're very transparent. We pay our prizes on time. We announce our winners on time, uh, and our rules are right up there. We're open to feedback. We refund entries if they're not eligible. They don't just fall into the void. Uh, I think over time that that will build that builds up goodwill, and that's been helpful for us. And, and it really yeah, it sets it's, an it's, example, it right? For mm -hmm. you know, as you're going through, I mean, being listed means you know, being part of a winning writers database is a big compliment. And if you're if you're following, you know, those best practices, it it is setting the stage for some of the things that you would like to see changed, you know, to show, hey, we're doing this and it's working for us. You know, it's probably the best way for you to impact that space. So that's awesome. Um, that's true. Yeah, you, you don't you don't just get to be in the database by offering a contest. I mean, we, we do have <laughs> right. some we have some standards about what your rules are is it fair to writers are you claiming too much intellectual property rights like i mentioned before in in people's entries um and is the fee prize ratio i mean the database is now free but to to tweet about a contest or to advertise in the newsletter which is one of our our main revenue sources right now is is the ads in our free newsletter uh, from sponsors and publishers and workshops and so forth. You know, Adam will send it to me. He's like, is this person acceptable for us to advertise? I'm like, no, <laughs> they're, they're charging $50 for a hundred dollar prize. No. <laughs> right. Right. No, I love that. I love that. I mean, I do similar things with my site too. You know, I want to mm -hmm. make sure. And 
I've given plenty of feedback, you know, especially to some of the new journals where, you know, I have to let them know, hey, you don't have enough contrast on your website. There are going to be some people who can't even read your guidelines because it's white font on a light pink background. Oh. You know, oh, yes. I mean, there are little things like that. <laughs> don't get that me you, started. <laughs> yeah, you have to be mindful about, right? There are some things. And what I really love about that engagement is, and I think part of it is because I'm starting to get fairly established and, you know, working with my site for oh, six or so years. Well, mm -hmm. about when we started talking. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> people respond really well to that kind of feedback if it's given in a constructive way. And, mm -hmm. and I love to see them just get excited about, oh, oh, and we added this and we changed that. Is that mm -hmm. better? You know, and then they, then they really get a taste for, you know, what they can do to improve and, and they get passionate about it. So it's usually a very positive outcome, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever had a negative outcome, of, <laughs> you know, giving somebody <laughs> feedback. So the writing community in general is, I think, is a great community. At least that's been my experience for the most part. I think so. I think it's great that you are focusing on accessible design as well oh, yeah. as attractive design. That is something we try to advise people about like when, when we write critiques of the North Street books, for example, or we write the judges essay every year with every contest, we'll write a little overview essay. And that's often something that we point out is like your typeface is too small. You yes. know, this book design is, you know, these big blocks of text are not accessible. Uh, these are things that I also see in mainstream publishers, honestly, but sure. especially if you're a self-published author, I really recommend that folks check out our useful resources page. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just link to the resources on the main website, you can just pull that up, there's, a, there's links to the resources and there's a page for self-publishing resources and there's lots of uh, book designers and design advice sites that we've looked at that we think are good and the like, articles about what to look for when you're designing something and, you know, and design your website as well as an author because having a sure. good website is very important. So definitely look at those resources and the business and technical resources set sites if, uh, if you're thinking of creating any kind of a journal or, or anything like that. And you don't have to be an expert. A lot of this stuff is really just things maybe you didn't think of. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and maybe um, you haven't had exposure to someone with visual impairment, or maybe you don't, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there are other communities that you just haven't engaged with. And you want to make sure that whatever you're putting out there is accessible mm -hmm. to everybody. And it really is, you know, some of this stuff is, it's not that any of it's difficult. It's just being aware, like you said. And yeah. then there's all kinds of tips and tools and so much stuff that's just really mm -hmm. easy to access now. So yeah, no, I love that. That's, I think that's really, really great advice. Mm -hmm. So I do want to ask you, um, what else has helped you the most as a writer, kind of from your personal writing journey outside of, win well, I mean, of course, everything that you've done with winning writers, I'm sure has contributed, but are there specific things that, you know, really helped you grow as a writer? I think a lot of what makes a writing life work is not writing related. It has a lot more to do with work, at least for me, has a lot more to do with working on myself as a person, making sure the relationships in my life are good. I'm not, I'm surrounding myself with people who support me as a person and with whom it's safe to be vulnerable and to change and to push boundaries of who I'm becoming. And that really is contiguous with writing life and life life. Uh, having having a healthy psyche, working on my spiritual development, working on my you know therapy, because uh, I think a lot of the problems with writing like there's technical problems and then there's like soul level problems, sure. and technical problems don't seem so big once you've overcome the emotional blocks. So I think the most important thing that we can do for ourselves as writers is to to make sure our, you know do the best we can to make sure our lives support healthy safe creative self-knowledge and and speaking honestly and read a lot of books <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely and don't I'm be so... afraid to stop reading books if they're not enjoyable to you because <laughs> life is short absolutely absolutely i mean that applies to a lot of things right i mean i think giving ourselves per permission for that personal space and also mm -hmm. to pick the things that truly give us the most joy and are going to help us, you know, move forward 
emotionally and in our lives as a whole, that's so key. And I mean, I've done a lot of that type of <laughs> soul searching. Um, I took June off from my website specifically to ask myself, what's most important? Where am I going to devote my time? Mm. Because I scrambled after every opportunity possible for for years in the poetry and writing community because there was just so much and I wanted to do everything and and then realized I had to take a step back that I couldn't do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it really is, it's so true. It just to measure what is most important to you. And mm -hmm. I a hundred percent, I love what you said about, yeah, if the book's not working for you, put it down, grab another, maybe you'll go back to it. Maybe you won't. Mm -hmm. There've been plenty that, you know, I've picked up and I've enjoyed to some degree. And then I went, mm, I think I got it. I've had enough of that one. <laughs> Time to pick up the next thing. <laughs> and uh, see what see what I can get from it. So yeah. that's really lovely, lovely advice. Uh, thank I guess you one, for one sharing more thing, that. One more mm -hmm. thing I would say, I guess, is that for me anyway, writing reveals what I really am and what I really believe. And that can be uh, something that can disrupt one's life or change one's life. And so uh, I guess be, be aware of that and make the space for that to happen and let the writing show you where you're growing and where you're changing and what you actually think and feel even if that turns out to be something that is challenging to you uh because the reason you're writing that for a reason like it's going to come out not writing is not going to stop it's not going to help like whatever <laughs> sure. has to be addressed is going to it's going to show up so write your way through it and something interesting will happen um uh, and there's something else I was going to say about that. I'm trying to remember what it was. Well, it will come to me, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's enough advice, I think. <laughs> no, that's that's also very, very great advice. And I mean, I think I do recognize the most about myself in some of the metaphors that come out of my poems, mm -hmm. you know, in trying to address a specific topic or something that's affected me and getting a metaphor down and going, oh, that's what that is. And being able to address it, you know, mm. personally, recognizing some of those, something that was bothering me that I maybe couldn't put into words until it suddenly reared its head as a metaphor in a poem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I completely relate to that so much. And I do think that's, you know, we are so as writers, we're attentive, we're always looking to be inspired. What's that next thing that catches our eye, that detail that we want to include in our writing. And I think what you're suggesting is that you know, we look, we give our writing that same attention, you know, as far as how it relates to us as human beings. So I really love that. Okay. And I remember the thing I was going to say. Which oh, is perfect. During, during the uh, pandemic last year, I have a nine-year-old son and he didn't have school for a few months and we ended up doing a lot of art together. And I really rediscovered the, the childlike pleasure of physical art making i started wow. doing jigsaw puzzles like coloring making collage and i really think that some kind of non-verbal creativity is really nice as a writer because uh, i'm so much in my head and i'm finding that it really feeds my soul to be making things that i don't have ambition about that i just do for pleasure that's creative and embodied yeah so, like that's... go out there and finger paint and it will make your writing better Sure. No, that's awesome. I think that's, yeah, no, that's terrific. I know my daughter through the pandemic tried a variety of different things and her latest is uh, crocheting, oh, which yes. she somehow has an incredible knack for it and has done some brilliant things. Mm -hmm. um, and who knew that crocheting was, was <laughs> so creative. I, I guess I never t treated it that way myself, but yeah, I mean, and that, that similarly that the, having something tactile to work with in your hands, mm -hmm. you know, is such a different experience. So really, yeah. really great, really great advice. Thank you so That's much, good. Jindy. That was meaningful for me too. And I'm sure for our listeners. And I, honestly, I could just probably talk to you for hours. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think we had some really great information shared here. And thank you so much for so many, you know, really of your, your personal touches, uh, advice, and information and for all the work you've done for writers with winning, winning writers over the years. I mean, really just incredible. And 
I'm very proud to know you and to have interacted uh, with you. And I know it's been very valuable for me for sure. So Thank most you. importantly, how can viewers sign up to get your free newsletter and other updates? Where can they find you? Well, go to winningwriters.com. And at the top of the screen, there's a grayish black bar that has different options on different words and click on the best free literary contests and you'll see a drop down menu that says free winning writers newsletter and just click on that page and you can sign up for the free winning writers newsletter which comes once a month on the 15th of the month and it has all the contests and opportunities and so forth and then you get to be on our email list and you get announcements about our contests and uh, Adam's very careful about not sending out too many emails. So we try not to bother you too many times, uh, but we will let you know when our contests have deadlines and occasionally send out a curated mailing from some sponsor that we think is worthwhile because that helps keep the lights on. So <laughs> they pay <laughs> us for sure. that. And we always make sure that it's something that we ourselves would recommend and use. Uh, so go to winningwriters.com, look for best free literary contests, free winning writers newsletter, give us your email address and we never sell your address and we'll just give you lots of good info and uh, go and read some of our past winners online and uh, see what what you think of them. And if you think your work's a good fit, please, please send it along. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for directing us that way. I will say you're also on social media. So I believe uh, at Winning Facebook Writers. and Twitter. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So, so easy to find. I will attest that the emails are not obtrusive. I have stayed signed up uh, all these years and have never been, uh, have always been pleased with what I get uh, from Winning Writers in my mailbox. So I definitely encourage everyone to do that if you're not signed up already. And thank you. thank you again. This has been so great and so wonderful to get to know you a little bit better outside of, you know, our email conversations and other things that we've done in the past. So thank you again for your time today. And it really, it truly was such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Trish. Your site is a great resource too. So it's really nice to connect with you. All right. Thank you so much. And we will see you for our next interview series. Bye.